So we continue our series on the Beatitudes. Um, today, the second last of the, of the Beatitudes. Uh, in a sense, uh, I think we've reached the climax. Because if you look at the first six, it's all about the character that is built in us. In that moment when, when God changes our lives and we give our lives to him, things happen. The character of our life changes. We realize our need for God and we realize, I can't do this world. I can't do this life if I have to do it on my own. I need God in my life. The moment that happened, we said to each other, the other characteristic that happens in my heart is, it says, blessed are those who mourn. Uh, But we said to each other, what it actually says is, when we look at this world and we realized how broken it is and how hurting it is, our hearts start bleeding so that we want to change this world. As another consequence, a consequence that says, I look at the world and I see the injustice and the hurt and the pain, and I want to become one of those that brings justice. How do I do that? By being meek, mild, gentle. Not all about me, but being a gentle, kind person. Changes my life so that I become a person that lives God's mercy in this world, where my heart will be a gentle, broken heart that can give and love and care. And then last week we said, it also has this effect in me that I ask God to change my heart and give me a pure heart, which means an undivided heart, a heart that belongs to God alone. Those are the characteristics. But once that happens, the last two become the conduct. How do I live these characteristics in this world? And Jesus says, Matthew 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Jesus says, the most obedient thing that I can do in this world, in a world that is broken, in a world full of backstabbing, in a world full of hate, in a world where there is no peace, in a world where it is dog-eat-dog, in a world where it's all about myself. You are so blessed, says Jesus, when your conduct changes into that of becoming one that makes peace, where your heart, where your life becomes like that of your Father, and it opens up to everyone in this world, also those that don't like you. Also those that hurt you. Also those that trample all over you. You're blessed when you can make peace. And then there's this promise. Because if you do that, it'll show exactly who you are. You will be called children of God. That's a beautiful title. It's an honorary title. And and let me explain this for a second. If you go read the Greek of this, it actually doesn't say children of God. It goes right back to the Old Testament. The Greek says, Hoti autoi wioi theu kleithesomai. Did you get that? Okay, I'll explain it. Hoti. Because of that, autoi, you... We oi, sons, theu, of God, kleithesomai will be called. And then you will be called sons of God. And we're saying, is that misogynist? No, no. It's a title of honor. He's going back to the Old Testament. And that's why it's beautiful the way that it's translated with children. Although there's another word for children in Greek, tekna. Weos is a son. But this was the title that was given to the king. Because the king was seen as the son of God and called the son of God because he was expected to represent God in everything that he did and what he stood for. And as the son of God, he was expected to be the one who would make peace and bring peace for his people. So look at that again. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
because you will be called, and I love the translation then, children, children of God, honorary title. It says who you are. It says where you come from. It says who you belong to. It says whose DNA you have. It says whose blood runs in your veins. But here's the thing. So if you have this wonderful, beautiful, honorary title, child of God, it needs to show in your conduct. You have to be a peacemaker, says Jesus. What does that mean? Peacemaker is a, is a all-inclusive, comprehensive word. It's not just, oh, I have peace of mind. Or I have peace in my heart. Or Chad lives next door to me and I have peace with my neighbor. I'm not mad at him because his dog barks 12 o'clock at night. We have peace. No, 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 no. I think we have a hymn that, that actually explains it beautifully. When I'm called a peacemaker, it means that in this world that is dark and that walks in darkness, as a child of God, I need to be that shining light that is different. When I walk in this dark world with all the darkness that goes with that, and people see me, the light of Jesus Christ needs to shine through me. That one who came into this world when it was dark and messed up. And what was the first song that God's army sang into this world? The first line of God's new constitution. Peace on earth. For today... The Messiah was born. And you look in God's army. Yes, remember I told you that. When it says there was a host of angels, it was actually stratias to urianiu, which means soldiers are from heaven. When God sends these soldiers, they bring peace. They sing a song that brings a new light. So if I am a peacemaker in a dark world, I do not become dark. I do not do the things of the dark but I shine the light. In a dark world that is broken, that beautiful song says, may we be a healing balm to the nations. Peacemakers bring healing where there is brokenness. Peacemakers bring love where there is hate. Peacemakers bring joy where there is suffering. Peacemakers give freely of themselves even if the cost is so high that he needed to go to a cross. If I am called a child of God and I am a peacemaker, I need to be that healing bomb. It needs to show in every little piece of who I am. My hands. My hands. The things they show and the things they do when I'm driving in the car needs to show peace. The feet, the way they walk, not turning their back and walking away in that moment when I'm angry, but turning back and opening my arms and holding and being a healing balm, that's called being a peacemaker. The words that I speak to those around me, even if I don't like them or they don't like me, the way that that honey comes out or not, will say whether I am a peacemaker who is worthy of the title child of God. But here's the second thing that goes with that. It's also true that I need to be a peacemaker to those that I would call my enemies. Now hold on to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. And I'm the first one that needs to do that. Sounds easy, but it's not. But here's the thing. 
I want to be a peacemaker, I also have to do that to those that have walked over my life and left me bleeding and hurting and broken. I want to be a peacemaker. I also have to be that for those who have broken my heart in so many ways. If I want to be a peacemaker, I have to do that also for those that don't mean good to me. It's not me saying that. It's Jesus. It just goes on. Remember we're in Matthew 5. He goes right down to verse 23. Listen. So says Jesus, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother or your sister has something against you, leave your gift at the altar. First go and be reconciled with them. And then come and offer your gift. And you're saying, but we don't go offering anymore. Okay, I'm going to change the translation for you. Listen. So therefore, if you kneel down to pray before God, and there in that moment you remember that your brother or your sister has something against you, get up from your knees and go to your brother and your sister first and be reconciled with them and then come back. And then offer your prayer before God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Because they will have this title. Children of God. He goes on in verse 43. He doesn't stop there. He says, you've heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. It says, Jesus, I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. Blessed are the peacemakers. Boy, it's difficult. Boy, it's hard. Because some days that's the first ceiling in my heart, right? You did me wrong. You hurt me. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you back as much as I can. And God says, no. No. You go love them. You open your heart for them. You open your arms for them. And I'm saying, God, I don't want to do that. And God says, really? What did I do for you? Because who was I? Who was I when Jesus died for me? Wasn't I a messed up sinner who walked right over God's heart who was saying to me, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I just walked over his heart over and over again. And God says, I will make peace with you. I am sending my son into your life. And he will change your life so that you will look at me and have peace with me and know that you can stand before me. And I'm not angry at you, but my arms will be open. So if you are my child, and you carry that title, and you carry my DNA, and you carry my blood, you go live that in this world. But I can't do it. I know you can't. But the Holy Spirit who lives in you can. Do not withstand the Holy Spirit when he speaks. Because that's how we get hurt. When we don't allow the Spirit to take over and let us change. Because think back. When we were all messed up and broken and living in this world, Isaiah 9 says people were walking in darkness and they couldn't see. And then a child was born. Son was given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. And remember the third one? Prince of Peace. And he wasn't just born in Bethlehem. He was born into our lives. It's called rebirth from above. 
And when Jesus is born into your life, it can't be the same. It changes. It changes. It changes the way you think and feel and act and do. And I become like my God. A peacemaker. Blessed are you when it's so hard that you can be a peacemaker. Because you won't just be called a child of God. You are a child of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, sometimes it's hard. It's really hard to hear the word. We want it to be easy and easygoing. And when you call us to be peacemakers, it's a little different from just being called peace-loving. Because everyone is peace-loving. Peacemakers are different. We bring your heart and we bring your arms and we bring your life. And we live that. But we have to confess before you, Lord, that that's not easy. And we, we struggle with that. Especially when it comes to those moments of those who hurt us and, and leave those really hurtful scars in our lives. So help us to be that. Thank you that we belong to you. Thank you that we are a part of your family. Thank you that you live in our lives. We adore you, Lord Jesus. Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen.